So hello everyone, I welcome you all to this new lecture on this one. So basically in this channel, till now we have seen about various part of real analysis, real number. So Euclid division, lemma, Euclid division, algorithm, then fundamental theorem of arithmetic. In this lecture we are going to see fundamental theorem of, uh, fundamental theorem of arithmetic as well as its application on, various application on, on this one like someone say 4 to the power n is 4 to the power n is divisible by 2, 4 to the, 6 to the power n or various forms of this one. So in this lecture we are going to see the fundamental theorem of arithmetic again and then we will see some application on fundamental theorem of arithmetic. Now let's recap what is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic says. So every composite number can be uniquely expressed as see ev every composite number can be uniquely expressed as the product of primes the product of primes except for the order in which the prime factorization occurs actually there are some factors in which if we do the prime factorization let's say if we if we do the prime factorization method by 2 3 actually 2 3 5 these are already prime factors so they are they are talking about this one 2 3 5 9 and so on so 9 is not the prime factor it's a com prime number it's composite number so they are in prime fact they are talking about mainly talking about the prime factorization method and the factorization which will occur in this prime factorization method will be unique that means a particular form of prime factorization will occur for a particular number no two number will have same form of prime factorization don't worry i am going to show it in the next part now let's see some application on fundamental theorem of arithmetic okay Let's start this one. So if we search this one then one of the most famous questions of this one is let's say wait a moment. One of the most one of the most famous question of this one is then there's is four to the power n ends with the digit zero for any natural number n. That means there is a number let's say four to the power n. So they will ask will four to the power n 4 to the power n something will if you if you multiply if you multiply 4 into 4 into 4 up to n times will this result there will be a something result will that result contain 0 at the last position so they are asking this one okay so how many of you can guess this one in this in class time you have left something related to this topic okay let me recap you all the all this don't worry, I am going to recap all you. So, the first point is, when a number will end with 0, the first point is, when a, when a number will end with 0, generally, a number will end with 0 if it has 2 and 5 in prime factorization. Let's say we are doing the prime factorization. In prime factorization, it, the, the, this number should have 2, 5. 2, 5 or multiple of 2, 5 in it. If if 2 and 5 both are not present, then that number will not end with the digit 0 in, in the last. Next. So point number 2 is in 4 to the power n, we can write 4 to the power n as 4 to the power whole square to the power n. Okay. Now you can see that 4 to the power n. 4 to the power n. We can add 4 to the power n 2 to the power whole square to the power n. Here, what are the prime factors? In this one, 2 is the only and only one prime factors. Because 4, 4 is 2 to the power whole square and this one. This one is the only prime factor. That means, prime factorization of 4 to the power n does not have 2 and 5. The combination of 2 and 5 is not present. That means, it will not have 0. In its end position. Since 5 is not a factor of 4 to the power n, therefore 4 to the power n can never end with the digit 0. So you might be thinking what is the application of fundamental theorem of arithmetic here? The, the application of fundamental theorem of arithmetic is they have said that in the, the prime factorization of each number is unique. Here 4 to the power n. So prime factorization 4 to the power n is 2 into 2 into 2 into it, it will go on. Okay. So that means the prime factorization this one is unique. So 
actually no other number will have this prime factorization this format okay that means 4 to the power n is this one thus 4 to the power n cannot ends with the digit 0 now if you want to see the if you want to see the writing style then let me show you this one so here this one is the writing style so how will you write this one in exam so you will write if 4 to the power n ends with the digit 0 then it must have 5 basis factor because 2 and 5 are compulsory now 4 to the power n 4 to the power n is equal to 2 to the power whole square 2 to the power n that means 2 to the power 2n okay this shows that 2 is the only prime factor of 4 to the power n okay but for bringing the n for the bringing the n digit 0 we must have 2 and 5 now also we know that from the fundamental theorem of arithmetic prime factorization of each number is unique that's so 5 is not a factor of 4 to the power n so 4 to the power n is not having the factor as 5 okay 5 to the power something so hence 4 to the power n can never end with a digit 0 okay in exam this question may come but you but not only this question they may ask as 6 to the power n or 5 to the power n 12 to the power n and so on okay you must try the all this one okay and if you can solve this one then do refer to the rsi book or comment me okay i will going to show you all this one